Hi everyone, I am the Sarcastic Sloth and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to be covering David Dobrik's most recent videos, uh, the apology video that he issued last night, but then also a week prior he released a video that I guess was a sort of apology video, but what I wanted to do was contrast both of these so that we can get a little bit of perspective. In terms of perspective, I feel like we have to keep in mind this is all revolving around the incident with his vlog squad cohort Dirty Tom and his having committed an act of essay upon a woman. Now, the reason why I'm making it, I'm just saying that at the forefront is so that we don't get caught up in the fact that this is this isn't just like some frivolous drama. This isn't like tea or any kind of that nonsense. We're having a look at an apology video like I usually do on this channel, and I have done many. I feel like I'm qualified to do this now. But like I said, I wanted that sort of at the forefront so that we don't get away from that throughout the course of this video. So if this seems a little bit more serious compared to my usual videos, although it's sort of seems like the topics of all of my videos are pretty serious these days then you know apologies but uh, I, f I just feel like we have to treat this with the um, reverence that it basically deserves but with all of that being said let's crack on so as per usual everything i'm going to be saying today are my own thoughts and opinions on the topic and if you do not like that then ta-ra what we're going to do today we're going to have a look at both apology videos we're going to speed them up in one and a half times speed so obviously this isn't a crazily long video well first of all i had to with his with his video because i knew i was going to go into it with a bit of bias because quite frankly i don't really like david dobrik at all i've watched his most recent apology like three times just to see you know if i was you know watching it through a certain light and i feel like it's important for us to compare the two videos because it's basically a week and we can see what a difference a week makes his first apology which we're going to play in one go in its entirety and then i'll speak about that but obviously a two minute apology isn't really anything so um we can just watch that in one go in one and a half times speed so roll the clip Hey guys, it's David. Um, I want to come on here real quick and address some conversations that have been going on on the internet. Um, I, you know, I've made over 600 videos and I've made a bunch of TikToks, Vines, Instagram stories, tweets, the whole thing. Um, and I'm obsessed with what I do. I love being able to make people happy for a living. And that's all that I want to do. Um, that being said, consent is something that's super, super important to me. Whether I'm shooting with a friend or shooting with a stranger, I always make sure that whatever the video I'm putting out, I have the approval from that person. Um, and I also acknowledge that there's times where a person can change their mind and they decide that they no longer want to be associated they no longer want to be in the video that I'm putting up and then I'll take the video down. And there's also been moments where I've looked back on videos and I realized that these don't represent me anymore and they're hurtful to other people. And I don't, I don't want them up because I've, I've grown, you know, as a content creator, and as a person, and I don't agree with some of the videos I've posted. Um, with the Seth situation, I'm sorry to Seth because I, like I said, I, I just want to make videos where everybody in it, you know, whether you're participating or watching is enjoying and having a good time. And I missed the mark with that one. And I'm really sorry. I, I truly, truly am. Um, and with, with people, in my life that I don't film with anymore, um, like Dom and you know the other people that I no longer film with, I, I chose to distance myself because I don't align with some of the actions and I don't I don't stand for any kind of misconduct and I I'm I was just I've been really disappointed by some of my friends and for that reason I've separated from a lot of them. Um, I think with any video I make, my main purpose is to make people happy and, and inspire people and I just. I never want anything to get in the way of that. And I'm sorry if I've let you down and things like that won't happen again. And I learned from my mistakes. Um, and I also believe that actions speak a lot louder than words. And, you know, you can take my word for it that I'm gonna change, but I'll also show you and I'll prove to you that, you know, the mistakes I made before won't be happening again. Um, but yeah, that's it. All right, I love you guys. I'll see you later. So for me, when I first watched that video, it appeared pretty insincere and I've re-watched it since. And it still strikes me as very insincere. So I feel like at this point in time, David was still in his um, ivory tower, as it were, still had his sponsors. It was just the case that there was all of these people who were uh, wanting him to comment on the entire Dirty Dom SA situation because he was the one who is basically the facilitator of this. It's his channel. He makes the videos. He sets everything up, even though like people do have their own characters within those. He is still the coordinator of those videos and he ultimately decides what goes in and what does not he has never been good at apologies he's never been good at trying to you know make any kind of amendments or to like acknowledge what he's done it's ironic because this video was called let's talk 
It was set, put out on the 17th of March 2021. At this point at the moment we're 23rd of March 2021 and it's important to note it wasn't on his main channel. It was on the podcast channel that he has with Jason Nash. He turned off the likes and dislikes and he also turned off the comments. So on a video called Let's Talk he turned off the comments and any kind of repercussions. So that was just basically him making a statement, a half ass statement at that. I'm going to draw a comparison to another YouTuber from last year but I feel like it will become more clear as to why that is after we watch the second video. So we'll go ahead and do that. Hi guys, it's um 1.45 in the morning and I'm finally by myself, <laughs> which I know doesn't sound that crazy to be by yourself at 1.45 in the morning, but um, this week's been pretty hectic and there have been a lot of people, um, a lot of people around telling me what to do, giving me advice, um, trying to help me, um, most importantly. And and that was a lot. And and, and I, I now I, I just wanna, I wanna be able to do this and just shoot straight into the camera and just talk to you guys. Um, I've put myself in a lot of situations where I needed to apologize for my past actions and I've never done this correctly and I've never done this respectfully. And my last video is a testament to that. I, I, I don't wanna defend that video. I don't wanna delete that video. I just wanna be clear. What straight away, it sort of became quite evident to me that the difference between the two videos here is in the first video, I feel like he was coming from quite a, like an authoritative place. Whereas here, he's sitting down on the floor. It's 1.45. You know everyone's gone which you can see at the end of the day everyone would have been in sort of crisis talks over the course of the week because we need to remember this and i feel like this is an important component to this particular video is he's lost basically all of his sponsors he's lost ea chipotle um, DoorDash as well, very large amounts of money. So yeah, of course, it, it, he's had people there the entire time because they're saying for Christ's sake, whatever you're doing, it's not working. But you need to at least acknowledge this on some kind of level, on a human level, not as opposed to the first video, which sort of came across as, well, you live and you learn. I imagine he's had a lot of sleepless nights and also you know, he's going to be in full-blown panic mode because not only his money is in jeopardy, but all of the people who work for him too. Um, he's been backed into a corner, basically. What this video isn't going to be is it's not going to be me discrediting Trisha, Kat, or any other woman involved. Um, I'm going to be using words um, that may trigger some survivors, and that's just so I don't explain anything vaguely, and I can explain every situation appropriately. I want to start this video off by saying I fully believe the woman who came out against Dom and said she was by him. Um, as was reported the next day, I got consent to post the video. Even though I got the consent to post that video, I should have never posted it. And I, what I understand now, and I didn't understand before, is that she sent that text because she felt like she had to, not because she wanted to. And that's fucked up. And I'm sorry. When she later reached out a couple months later to take the video down, I immediately took it down. And I want to apologize to her and her friends for ever putting them in an environment that I enabled that made them feel like their safety and values were compromised. I'm so sorry. I was completely disconnected from the fact that when people were invited to film videos with us, especially videos that relied on shock for views or whatever it was, that I was creating an unfair power dynamic. I did not know this before. It was completely wrong and I wish I was more responsible and I wish I was more aware at the time and, I, and I'm so sorry I missed that. I wish I could sort of believe that if I'm being honest. I mean, this is something that I feel like a lot of YouTubers, especially the larger ones, have come across time and time and time again. It's the p power dynamic that's just never acknowledged. Of course, there's going to be a power dynamic if you're inviting people to be a part of your channel, which has like millions and millions of views, and you're asking them to do things that they ordinarily wouldn't do as a p to be a part of your video. He said immediately as well that he doesn't want to discredit any of the women involved in the story, i.e. Trish and Kath, or indeed the victim in all of this. The thing I, like, I, I find strange about this is he's already had two of his minions i.e. Jeff and Scotty come out and try and do that so again it's, it's like I, I find it hard to believe that any of this is sort of genuine if I'm being quite frank and like I said I've watched it many times and I've tried to watch it very through many lenses he's watched his cohorts try and fail with just basically trying to discredit all of these people who were involved. I would find it very hard to believe that he wasn't involved in either one of those two things. He's very known for saying that we just need to, whatever kind of accusations are being brought against us, we just need to ignore. That's something that is very vlog squad related. So the fact that over the last couple of weeks, people just com coming out from within that group trying to discredit it, I find it very hard to believe that they're not in some kind of group chat trying to 
make whatever moves happen. Again, at the moment, he's using all of the right words. So this is sort of why I can see why a lot of people on my Twitter are sort of conflicted as to this. It's because he's saying a lot of the right words and, well, we, we, there's going to be like a big factor coming up now, which I'm going to explain what my thoughts are on that, but we'll, we'll carry on. I didn't know what was going on in that room and I should have been. I should have been there and I should have been making sure that everybody involved was was taken care of and wasn't uncomfortable. I don't want to use buzzwords to try to justify this or explain this, but all I can say is people felt like they had to be silent for the sake of my video, and that's not right, and it's fucked up, and I'm sorry. I also want to acknowledge the women that spoke out against Dom in 2018. I'm talking about Ali, and then I'm talking about other girls that address their problems privately or publicly. Um, I'm sorry I didn't listen to you guys. I am sorry that I that I took Dom's word um, for what happened those in those certain situations, and I didn't believe you. And not only did I not believe you, but I made a joke of, of what kind of a person Dom was, because I couldn't wrap my head around a childhood friend of mine doing this to people and actually hurting people and, and, and I'm sorry for that. Now this is probably the only part that actually gave me food for thought which was if you had a childhood friend who was being accused of these kinds of things what would your reaction be? Now the, the vlog squad is sort of half their actual being and then half persona based like a character based as well but I feel like with this dirty dom he's you, there's an, there's enough instances of seeing him in real life acting in quite a perverse manner. Him on camera was just an exacerbation of something that was already there. Do you see what I'm saying? Well, if multiple people are coming forward and saying the same thing about this one guy who has this aspect of his personality and it's there, and you know it's there because you're filming him, and I imagine they had like a lot of talks behind the scenes. It's a childhood friend, so he's known him for a very long time, so you would have seen to some extent what he's like. Yeah, I, f I find that pretty pretty hard to believe. Again, it's it's not exactly something that I find easy to swallow on that one. The house of cards has fallen down and I feel like he's scrambling at the moment and if, if, if I'm being totally honest, where's his revenue going to come from now? Because all of his sponsors have gone. So it, it's going to be YouTube. So he's trying to, his hardest, he's got no choice at this point in time. He has to appeal to the YouTube fans. He has to appeal to the crowd. It's important to note as well, I feel, that at the point of, the, you know, when I did this video, this particular video had 397k likes and 17k dislikes and that's out of three and a half million views so this video obviously did the job in terms of his fans and his stands i mean in the comments there's a lot of people who are saying well it's just basically down to the fact that he's lost his sponsors that he's even doing this the stands are obviously drowning out the people with you know common sense i guess not only did i discredit you Ali, but i platformed down and not only did i platform down but i platformed the subject of sexual in a negative way where I made jokes about it and I reinforced that kind of behavior and I'm so sorry and I really let not only you down but a lot of people down a lot of people that watch me and my friends and family for that I made the decision to no longer film with Dom in 2019 and I'm not saying my content has been brilliant since then but that's when I first started taking into account um, the power dynamic and what influence I had on people that I was filming with but what I didn't do is I didn't go back to any of these women and apologize I, I kind of moved on and I learned from it and I grew from it but I didn't address the situation with these women I'm not talking publicly I'm saying even privately I didn't reach out to any of these people and that breaks my heart knowing that that I was doing all this stuff and I was making all this content while there was people that were still really hurt by what I now of course we saw there that he was um starting to cry I like I said uh, uh, this is something that I don't particularly buy and you might look at this video you might say I'm pr pretty callous right now um frankly I don't care again you've got to look, like realize that this is this week that he's just had is like the heaviest week of his life his personal life and his career he's had every single sponsor leave him he's having these accusations come closer and closer to his door he can't put out the people like the Jeffs and the Scotties to take the brunt and try and divert it somewhere else and he can't just like discredit anyone anymore. You could, you could argue that like this is maybe him realizing how rancid that he's been. You could look at it that way, I guess. But I personally, I feel like, you know, if you've been up for a week and you've basically lost everything, um, you know, he's, he's, he's got money, he's not going without, but in terms of like keeping his entire empire going, it's, it's dropping like flies, like no one's business. Not only that, but his friends are all dropping like flies as well. So I feel like maybe this is just a realization of where he is. I feel like this is more in relation to him and his own situation. That's just my opinion. You don't have to agree with it. I would wager he's probably at the end of his tether. And that is probably what has more to do with the crying now as opposed to 
him uh, feeling really bad because uh, like a week ago he didn't really care like we look at that first video he didn't give a rat's ass like a week ago at all he thought he'd be able to put that out and everyone would be totally fine with that but obviously it wasn't so he, I, f I feel like this is the first time when he's actually had to acknowledge the crappy actions of him and the people he's chosen to surround himself with. Before my content shifted to be more responsible and positive, I said and did things that were really offensive and I called them bad jokes and I, and I can't even call them bad jokes and it was cowardly of me to say in my last apology that I missed the mark um, because it's fucking gross and I'm sorry. A lot of people reached out to me saying cancel culture is bullshit and you need to fight back and you need to call people out and I don't agree with how this should be taken at all. And I think when there is a crisis, there's a serious opportunity to correct yourself, to learn and improve and to make sure those mistakes don't happen again. And that's why it's so important to hold yourself accountable. And I think with this situation, there's a lot I can look at and there's a lot I can learn from, but there's a lot of mistakes that I made and I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for everybody I've let down. I'm sorry to my family and I'm sorry to my friends that I've embarrassed and that this won't happen again. I said earlier that this gave me vibes of another YouTuber from last year and that person was Shane Dawson, you know, it was sort of like he got backed up into a wall and all of a sudden he had to make this uh, sort of manic, you know, I'm really sorry, uh, like I hate everything about myself or I denounce everything about myself prior. This is sort of the same energy, if I'm being honest. It feels like he's just, this is someone who's backed up against a wall and he has to address it. If he didn't have to address it, then he would never have done so. Like I said, every apology that he's done beforehand has been half-assed and more of a like a, well, I'm sorry that you're offended by that, but pff, whatever, dude. I, I'm not getting like true contrition from this. But then also I've been thinking recently, what what exactly constitutes as an apology that we as the viewing public would uh, find acceptable and i think i came to the conclusion that there is no good apology there are relatively decent apologies and then the thing that makes the apology is, are the actions afterwards so i guess we'll see what happens afterwards but i mean this isn't just some tomfoolery that he's been caught up in this is like sa and the facilitation of sa and sort of pandering to someone within his friend group who you know let's be honest wasn't exactly quiet about how he was acting towards women i might take a short break from all the social media stuff because i realize there's a serious lack of infrastructure when i make any kind of content and i want to be able to have a place of checks and balances i want to have hr and i want to be able um, to have people communicate discomfort in a way that's that's comfortable to them and where, where they don't feel like their emotions or what they're doing or, or how they're acting is compromised. It, it doesn't feel right to go back to posting like I have been and it also doesn't feel right to go dark because I love what I do. But I think it is important to show that change is possible and that I'm learning. Maybe even forgiveness is possible. I feel like if you're over a certain amount of subscribers on YouTube, um, these should be commonplace. The, the bigger your YouTube channel and the more people you incorporate, it's, it's more like a business than it is just, say, like me talking into my camera in my room. Do you know what I mean? I want to use this opportunity to step up and own my mistakes. And like I said before, I've never done apology the right way. Um, and I'm sure I'm going to look back at this and I'm, I'm going to be pissed at some things that I didn't say or I wish I could have added more. Um, but this is this is my beginning to that. And, and, and I'm sorry for everybody that I hurt. I also want to add that I'm making myself available to anyone that wants to reach out that I've hurt in the past. Um, I want to be able to, to hear and understand from yourselves. And I'll be reaching out on my own to some people um, because I still have a lot of learning to do. And I think when you talk to other people, especially about experiences like this, it, um, it really helps you see things in a different way. Again, it sort of goes back to what I was saying about the apology. Is there any good apology? I don't think there is a good apology. I think there's only the actions afterwards that sort of put that apology in context some people saying oh we need an apology from dom no dom needs to be in fucking jail man like i don't care what anyone says that guy is clearly a danger we'll, we'll see what happens with david dobrik in the aftermath really we'll see if he's able to pick himself up in the same kind of fashion that he did before i don't think he'll ever get over it in terms of i don't think he's ever going to have the same kind of sponsors i don't think he's going to make the same kind of content as before because is he going to really be able to just give away teslas left right and center i don't think so but yeah i'm sorry if this video was all over the place i just wanted to sit and talk and ramble and and i, I really truly hope that someone can take something away from this experience and another creator can can take away from this and i know it's it feels because I, I know how crazy it felt to me that there was some sort of toxicity or some sort of power dynamic in my friend group but really just take the moment especially when creating content that you're trying to get viewership out of where you're trying to get laps out of like really take a moment and and look at where the jokes end and where the feelings begin because i think that's so incredibly important okay um, i'll see you guys bye i never thought that i had was you know like say for, I'll, I'll take the example of shane because i've used him a couple of times like a lot of stuff that he was doing was like about five to ten years ago sort of thing 2018 2019 
wasn't that long ago at all so it's not like oh wow it's a different time it's a different time of youtube which i still don't really wrong is wrong and you know what 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 what's right and what's wrong and you know the really sensationalist stuff gets the most views on youtube i understand that but at the same time you know what's right and you know what's wrong him and his friends were able to keep this sort of frat boy mentality they basically made a, a, like a habitat where this kind of stuff could happen basically it, it, you know it's not like they were all choir boys and dirty dom was just this crazy out of control guy with every video that something's got to be even more crazy and even more wild so it leads to you know the kind of environment where i feel like someone could get away with sa and the rest of them sort of go well that's just dom he's a crazy fucker it's um yeah like i say it's really dark man like, this entire thing is really dark in terms of the apology itself because you know obviously i've done a lot of apology videos so if i was just going to rate this apology i think it's done its job with the masses like i said it's got it's got like far more likes than it has dislikes um so that shows that people were obviously on his side but in terms of like um do i feel like it was a like a good apology if i was looking at it objectively i don't I don't think so because you got to you have to take into account what has come in the week beforehand he's lost it all so yeah like he's gonna be up for days he's gonna be teary-eyed anything that sort of brings up the mention of his uh, demise almost is going to bring tears to his eyes so I don't I don't buy the tears as in they're genuine with the you know when he was talking about the people that had uh, talked to him about Dirty Dom and or you know any kind of like victims or anything of this nature i don't i'm afraid i just don't believe that but i mean again these are all my opinions what do you think do you believe him do you think i'm being a bit too critical of this do you th agree with me do you think that this is essentially bollocks but we'll have to see what the aftermath is to sort of really get any kind of grip as to what this apology means are you in between do you not know are you like are you not swayed either which way let me know in the comments down below if you like the video and you like the channel then like and subscribe that would be absolutely banging and as always stay safe out there 